Hello, this is Fatih Öztürk. Now I'm going to talk about SL1 Excellent, which is about historical reactor design, reactor operational, and how Excellent happened. From now I, I apologize to you guys for my coughs and for my pronunciation. Stationary low power reactor number one, also known as SL1, was a United States Army experimental nuclear reactor located at the National Reactor Testing Station, west of Idea Falls. The reactors were to repl replace diesel generators and boilers that provide electricity and space heating for the Army's radar stations. The reactors branch formed the Go Goat lines for the project and contract with Argonne National Laboratory to design, build, and test a prototype reactor planned to be called the Argonne Low Power Reactor. The prototype was constructed at the National Reactor Testing Station from July 1958 to July 1958. It went critical on August 11, 1958, became operational on October 24, and was formally dedicated on December 2, 1958. The 3 megawatt thermal VWR used 93.20% highly enriched uranium fuel. It operated with natural circulation using light water as a coolant and moderator. Argonne National Laboratory used its exper experience from the borax experiments to design the reactor. The circulating water system operated at 20, uh, 300 pounds per square inch following true fuel place of uranium aluminum alloy. Plant was turned over to the Army for training and operating experience in December 1958 after ex extensive testing. With Combustion Engineering Incorporated acting as the lead contracted beginning February 5, 1958. By plant operation was generally done by the killer in two man crews. Any development of the reactor was to be supervised directly by CEI staff. CEI decided to perform development work on the reactor as recent as the later half of 1960, in which the reactor was to be <coughs> operated at 4.7 megawatt thermal for a PL1 condenser test. As the reactor core aged on boron neutron poison strips, corroded and flaked off. CEI calculated that about 80% of the boron in the core had been lost. This resulted in the addition of cadmium sheets on November 11. 1960, which were installed. The majority of the plant equipment was located in a cylinder building 38.5 in diameter with an overall height of 48 feet. The reactor building was made of plate steel, most of which had a thickness of 1 over 4 inch. The reactor building was not a pressure, pressure type contain, containment shield as would have been used for reactors located in populated areas. Nevertheless, the building was able to contain most of radi radioactive particles re released by the eventual explosion. The reactor core structure was built for a capacity of 59 fuel assembly, one startup neutron source assembly and nine control rods. The core in use, however, had a had 40 fuel elements and was controlled by five cruciform rods. The five active rods were in, in the shape of a plus symbol in cross section. The control rods were made of 60 mm thick cadmium clad with 80 mm of aluminium. They had an overall span of 40 inch and an effective length of 32 inch. The 40 fuel assemblies were composed of nine fuel plates each. The plates were 120 mm thick, consisting of 50 mm of uranium aluminum alloy covered by 35 mm of aluminum cladding. The alloy was 35.8 inches long and 3.5 inches wide. The water gap between fuel plates was 310 mm. Water channels within the control rod shorts was 0.5 inches. The initial loading of the fourth assembly core was highly enriched with 93.2% uranium-235 and contained 31 pounds of uranium-235. 
how accident happened. On December 21, 1960, the reactor was shut down for maintenance, calibration of the instruments, installation of auxiliary instruments, and installation of 44 flux wires to monitor the neutron flux levels in the reactor core. The wires were made of aluminum and contained slugs of aluminum co cobalt alloy. At 9 p.m. on January 3, 1961, after a shutdown of 11 days for the holidays and during maintenance procedures, the cell one went prompt critical. In 4 milliseconds, the heat generated by the resulting enormous power surge caused water surroundings the core to begin to explosively vaporize. The water vapor caused a, caused a pressure wave to strike the top of the reactor vessel. This propelled the control rod and the entire reactor vessel upwards, which killed the operator who had been standing on the top of the vessel, leaving him pinned to the ceiling. The other two military personnel, a supervisor and a trainee, were also killed. In all water moderator reactors, to operate the reactor requires the presence of water to moderate the neutrons produced by the nuclear reaction and allow the reaction to proceed. If the reaction becomes too great, several, react several factors limit the reaction. The first limiting factor is normal heat expansion of the core as its components heat up and spread apart, decreasing the reaction rate. For this design that could autom automatically regulate the reaction if the period was about 100 ms or greater. If the core expansion can't react fast enough or with enough reduction in the power. The next limiting process is the water turning the steam quickly and automatically removing the water moderator and shut shutting down the nuclear reaction. How long it takes for this to happen depends on the redesign of the reactor. In this design it was about 6 ms before steam formation started in part because of the thickness of the aluminum core cladding. A thinner cladding would have let it respond more quickly by not insulating the core as much. As a small reactor, the SL1 was designed with the main, main central control rod, which was able to produce a very large excess reactivity if it was completely removed. The excess reactivity is a measure of how much more capaci capaci capacity there is to accelerate the nuclear reaction than is required to start a controlled nuclear reaction for power generation. The potential for excess reactivity is always required because the fuel becomes less reactive over time. A greater excess reactivity causes a faster increase of the rate of the nuclear reaction. In normal operation, the control rods are withdrawn only enough to cause sufficient reactivity for a sustained nuclear reaction and power generation. In this accident, the very great reactivity addition produced a period estimated at 3.6 ms. That was too fast for the heat from the core to get through the aluminum cladding and boil enough water to fully stop the power graft in all parts of the core. Instead, the final control method happened in parts of the core, destructive vaporization and consequent conventional explosive expansion of the parts of the reactor core where the greatest amount of power was being produced most quickly. It was estimated that this core heating and vaporization process happened in about 7.5 ms before enough steam had been formed to shut down the reaction. We think the steam shut down by a few milliseconds. There were no other, there were no other people at the reactor step. The ending of the nuclear reaction was caused solely by the design of the reactor and the basis physics of heated water and core elements vaporizing, separating the core elements and removing the moderator. Heat sensors above the reactor set off an alarm at the central test security facility. The first response crew of firemen arrived nine minutes later and initially noticed nothing, nothing unusual with only a little stream rising from the building, normal for the cold night. Contro the control building appeared normal. On approaching the reactor building, their radiation detectors jumped sharply, 
to above their maximum range limit and they withdrew unable to know whether they could safely proceed or for how long they could remain at <coughs> at 9 uh, 970 p.m. a health physicist arrived and he and a fireman both wearing air tanks and masks with positive pressure in the mask to force out any potential cont contaminants approached the reactor building stairs. The detectors read <coughs> 25 röntgens per hour as they started up the stairs and they withdrew. Some minutes later, a health physician's response team, response team arrived with Jordan reactors. Radiation meters capable of measuring gamma radiation up, up to 500 röntgens per hour and fully butter protective clothing. One health physician and two firefighters ascended the stairs and from the top called see damage in the reactor room. With the meter showing Maximum scale readings they withdraw rather than approaching the reactor more closely. Around 10.30 p.m. the supervisor for the contractor running the stair and the contractor health physicist arrived. They entered the reactor building and found two mutilated men. One clearly dead, the other moving slightly. With a man with a one minute and one entry per person limit, a team of five men with stretchers covered the operator who was still breathing. He did not regain consistence and died of his head injury at about 11 p.m. When stripped, his body was so contaminated that it was emitting about 500 drunkens per hour. They looked for but did not, did not find the third man. With all potential survivors now recovered, safety of resource took precedence and work was slow to protect them. On the night of 4 January, a team of six volunteers used a plan involving teams of to the recover the second party. Radioactive gold 98 from this cold watch buckle and copper 64 from a screen in a cigarette lighter subsequently provide that the re reactor had indeed gone critical. The third man wasn't discovered for several days because of the wrecked state of the room. On 9 January, a team of 8 men in realize of 2 at a time allowed 65 seconds exposure used a net and crane arrangement to recover his body from its position beneath the ceiling above the reactor. The bodies of all three were buried in lead line caskets sealed with the contract and placed in metal walls with a constraint cover. All head measures physically injurious including severed limbs and fragments of fuel assemblies in once. Thank you guys. Hello guys, this is Can Yildiz. After Fatih Öztürk, I will talk about the after accident things which is like doing experiments, what is the result, the things that we should know, we should consider about. Now, why road was lifted? There are several possible explanations for why road was lifted out of the car. One of th that has been repeated most often, possibly because it appeals to the sensational appetites of the newspaper readers and writers, is that one of the operators decided to use reactor as a very novel or suicide weapon. This explanation seems to have been subtly encouraged by official investigators possibly because the people who designed and approved the plant could not be held responsible for the actions of an uns unstable reactor. A second possibility is the operator had some difficulty moving the road during an ordered operation and when it finally moved, it moved much farther than expected. A third possibility is the operators had decided to some preventative maintenance while they had the road separated from its drive mechanism. One of the required maintenance producers called for the main control road to be manually withdrawn approximately 3 inches in order to attach its to 
automat automated control mechanism from which had been disconnected post accident calculation estimates that main control rod was actually withdrawn approximately 20 inches causing the steam explosion the three most common theories proposed for this discrepancy are sabotage or suicide attempt by one of the operators in a direct withdrawal of the main control rod which was known be known to be sticky or an intentional attempt to exercise the sticky rod to make it travel more smoothly within the steed the maintenance logs do not address what the technicians were attempting to do and thus the actual cause of the accident is unlikely to ever to be known. There were scratches suggesting that at the time of the accident the operator was attempting to reinsert, reinsert the control load and prevent the runaway reaction. The investigations took almost two years and the Freshly installed flux wires provided important information about it, what happened inside the reactor core. Was it suicide or murder? In order for one believe that murder or suicide theory, one has to make a few assumptions. One assumption is that operator on duty were aware that removal of a single road could cause a prompt critical condition since the reactivity condition of a car requires a rather sophisticated calculation and since operators are normally trained how to make that calculations for only accepted operating conditions it's unlikely that we assign operators means like all of whom are technicians not engineers or scientists would know that simply removing one of the roads would cause an explosive conditions sufficient to kill people without knowing that reactor could explode it's unlikely that military men would attempt an action that would certainly result in severe disciplinary action in peer sensor in order to perform a task that would be more likely successful with a gun additionally one would have to assume that an operator could position himself in such a way as to, as to get ready, rapidly lift a 5 meter long controlled rod assembly approximately 50 cm, which is 20 inch, without the other operator, operators questioning his action. The top of the rod had more convenient grip, so the operator will have to position his hand one of the top of another. Nukes have always been trained to work in pairs and question actions that they do not understand such an action would probably have been questioned in the time prevent the accident these things are sticking and during operation the man on duty during the accident had been assigned the job of reattaching the five control loads their drive assemblies the mechanism had been removed earlier in the day to allow the insertion of some special test equipment into the core. The reattachment procedures available to operators is almost unbelievable from viewpoint of some trained in nuclear maintenance in 1980s and 1990s, which called the assembly of the road drive mechanism, replacement of concert blocks, installation of motor and clutch assembly are reverse of the assembly. It is especially incredible consider considering the fact that people who were reattaching the rows were not the ones who deattached them. The part of that we need to be done included manual lifting which each rod about 10 centimeters like each with around like four inches to allow attachment of a C clamp to hold the rod while operating attached and nut and washer. It's possible for an operator overshoot this distance, especially if the road didn't move freely. It's a bit unlikely that technician would move something like 50 centimeters when he was shooting for 10 centimeters, but it's not beyond comprehension. The difference thought of factor of five is only about an arm length, which could happen if the road, road was sticky, suddenly released, can be happen, yeah. Post accident analysis is like, however, appears to indicate that this didn't happen. The pieces found indicate that assembly process 
for the central road had already progressed to the point where the only things left to do was to lower the road back into its fully scrammed position. Like after that, radio chemist examined the gold buckle of one of the victims, watchman and tiny secret in a packet cigarette lighter. They found a radioactive gold 198 and copper 64. Only neutron capture could have created such an isotope then they identified that other fission products and several isotopes of uranium in the derbis, debris that had come out of the reactor building with the man. Like all of the evidence proved prov 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 that the reactor had gone critical. Radiation releases from the site was monitored. After calculation was complete completed, the results are like that. Approximately 10 curies had been become airborne by early morning on January 4. 20 curies by the morning of the 5th July. A total of more than 50 curies between January 6 and January 13 between 1961. According to calculation conducted at the time approximately 99.99% of the total fusion product in Manchuria in the core was retained inside the reactor building even thought it was not designed as containment. The exposure of the people who are the team of six military operators and the two AAC health physicists entered the reactor building and removed the body of the operator who was not lodged in the ceiling range between 1 and 30 rem. Removal of the third and final body took even more planning because of difficulty, difficult lo location and the high radiation field in the area. During the recovery period, 23 people received radiation doses greater than 3 rem. Of those, there is received total whole body dose in excess of 25 rem, but none received enough to display any near-term symptoms. A cloud of radioactive iodine-131 had drifted south toward Atomic City, but its dispersion and mixing with air had reduced its concentration well below any health concerns. It's important to study old accidents since the accidents are highly complex, which lead us to have experience in the nuclear technology. The accidents are sometimes obey single failure rule, which are sometimes caused by the high component of human factors. The lessons are learned are important in the future designs. SL-1 accident was the first fatal nuclear accident in United States and it resulted with the death of the three operators which were in the reactor building at the time when the accident happened. Since there were nobody else inside the reactor area, nobody can know how the accident starts actually, so some of possible reasons were discussed. SL1 accident was control road ejection accident, which was originated from the uncontrolled manual over withdrawn of the central control road. Since this control road had very high reactivity, it's designed to events made reactor prompt critical from the history and the tech chronology. chronology of the accident it's clear in SL1 accident the fuel melting design is margin become important because if the fuel rods had no melted there wouldn't be such a severe steam explosion which make the accident more fatal in this accident manual withdrawal of the control rods is important even event that have the possibility to start accident nowadays in nuclear technology to prevent human errors directly related to with reactor is minimum by designing to reactor to make system control itself. Of course, improper design of SL1 reactor was also important to initiate the accident. After the accident, the design wrongs related with SL1 was understood and again, it became an important experience for the following nuclear designs. After the accidents, Nuclear reactor like power or research designs are logged changed at the least the importance of the safety design margin were well were well, well understood and so to eliminate the human errors and the reactor codes become more pronounced. 
the lesson that we learned in this accident, the accident caused this design to abandon and future reactors to design to single control road removal wouldn't have the ability to produce the very large excess reactivity which was possible with the design. Today, this is known as the one stack road creation and requires our complete shutdown capability even with the most reactive road stuck in the fully withdrawn position reduces excess reactivity limits the possible size and speed of the power surge the accident also showed that in genuine extreme accident both vaporizing and of the, and vaporizing of the core and the water to the steam conversation would shut down the nuclear reaction this demonstrates in real accident the inherent safety water moderated design against the possibility of a nuclear explosion design of safety related system shouldn't be influenced by pressure on personal or tight time schedules all materials are considered for use in core of reactors should undergo rigid quality control both during their selection subsequent fabrication manipulation of core components should be like carried out of only when control instruments in activated and operator is communicate communicating with the control room importance of emergency planning was demonstrated in this case remote and accessible emergency depot educate equipment and procedures thank you guys